G'day folks, today on the Cruiser we're going to fit both doors. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so windscreen, sunroof, adequately clecoed and 90% in place at the moment. Let's move on to the doors. So the doors are a bit different in that there's a really good photo guide for the bubble doors. Now I've just, obviously the doors were made a while ago. Um, I call them Ken because it was Ken ages ago that I did these. And yeah, dragged the door frames back out. I fitted them up to the airframe. They still fit, which is great. I've got a nice gap around the edge in the frame. Pull out these uh, bubble windows and very little trimming required by the looks of it. Obviously I'm going to have to trim it to suit my aircraft but as far as like that's ready to put onto the frame and then I'll offer it up to the airframe. Pulled off my outside boomerangs um, just marking out. I've got my 30 mil, 30 mil block which goes under this top corner. Um, all three have got to touch the table. I've got a slight wonk so it says get a shifter out or a crescent wrench and just use the natural elasticity of the airframe and we'll bend it. So I'm just marking out. So down the front edge, bear in mind you've got the boomerangs in the corner. Um, I just went 150 mil. The, the plans say 200 mil, looked a bit too far for me. Other people have done 60. I went with 150 because it's 600 mil between those two holes. So 300 and then a 150 each side. Um, worked out well on that edge. Down the bottom, one on each of the bend and then centred it and then two at 150 but a bit closer at each end. So that worked out relatively even. I've got three down the back and I'm running 120 pitch down the back. So it was 48 or 480 so I just found centre and then half of that's 120. So 24 and then 120. Um, and I'll mark across the top. Pretty sure on the other door I've drilled down here. Took my notes but I didn't mark the top. I've got three across the top and that looks like 120 pitch. So I had the frame already made up in a previous step if you like. Positioned the window, drilled the holes with a burr bit. So for the Clico the burr went through first, then a bigger burr to find the hole, which was already uh, pre-drilled the holes underneath. I think I went through that. I've gone with 150 mil. I just found centre, then 150 mil, and then I'll have the corner brackets. Might be 120 at the back actually, and 150 um, down the front edge of the door there. I've taken some out so that I can um, when I sand. Um, points to note. If you have the Clecos in at the top while you're fitting the pins, just be careful you don't smack the, smack the Cleco. Um, I've done that once and luckily the, the glass survived. So when you're fitting the door, I've fitted it about 10 times now. So I've got the glass in, I've trimmed it all. It's just slightly, very slightly touching at the bottom there, which is great. Um, so I've got almost a perfect fit, probably, probably too close, but that's all right. Now I'm going to square up the edges. I'll show you the tools I've used so far. Um, part of my final fit. So I'm, I'll get it to this stage and then when the glass comes off the actual door frame I will, I can take a, you know, one or two mil off, square up the edges. My plan is to I'll run a texture line along the perspex, uh, make sure it all comes off so it's nice and square and, and flat um, around the whole perimeter. I'll probably buff the um, buff the edge up which will get the stress raises out a bit as well 400 grit or something like that to clean up the edges um, also down the back corner so with my frame because you've got the um, rear spar attachment point so the frame naturally see at the top there that's more than quarter of an inch um, it's probably seven or eight mil from the from the airframe here because you've got this frame and then down the bottom is just I just pulled my spacer, which was um, from memory about five mil, three sixteenth, um, down the down the bottom here. So you end up with 
next to no perspex overhang here um, to about quarter inch overhang there and I've got a dog leg cutting the perspex just so it doesn't touch the bracket there. Just depends how neat you really want to go. Um, so I've got that, what's called that rough cut and that'll do for that piece for now. Next time I take it off I'll just trim, trim along the bottom there then it's right. Um, I trim my, my hinge pin so it doesn't smack into the windscreen at this location on my the way I've got it set up. Other people may have the, um, the trim running up there. As far as these pins go, so they don't, they don't lay down flat because of the glass now, so they have to go um, up. If they end up being daggy, uh, yeah, hanging out, it wouldn't be hard just to make a little a little keeper or something up there. So that's the um, bubble window at this stage. Tools of the trade. So my burr, that's the um, uh, second burr that I use. I use a, a skinny taper one in the Dremel to find the hole. This one goes through, it'll pick up the hole and correct any sort of uh, angle in the perspex. Seems to be working well. Then I'll upsize with a step drill. Obviously tape, let the texture out. Straight edge, big long sanding blocks come in really handy. My other hinge pin there. Um, permagrit tools, if you haven't got any permagrit tools, do yourself a favour. Um, go and buy some permagrit tools. These things are fantastic. Pretty expensive, but that's lasted me probably 10 or 15 years of error modelling. Um, it just doesn't, doesn't wreck. You've got a coarse side and a fine side. Also Mighty Mouse here, nor the rat. Um, a little mouse orbital, or well not an orbital, a vibrating sander. Uh, that seems to be working. What I've found with the edge of the perspex is uh, nothing, you can't take huge amounts off in a hurry. Favourite tool in the sheds, pretty much, or in the hangar, is the, the vacuum. Uh, the Dremel cutting disc. So I do most of my, well, I do all my cutting with that little cutting disc. It takes a bit of time, but just work your way through slowly. It seems to be working well so far. These little drum sander bits work really well. Um, even zipping up along the edge. Obviously, that you, you have potential to put um, divots, I guess, but just for skimming a sixteenth off and then straighten it up with your sanding block. And I've kept all my pieces to practice on. Also tried cutting with a, uh, I call it a vibrosaw, but the vibrating, bl vibrating blade. Um, there's a jigsaw there. I've got the bandsaw over there. That's all. Anything with teeth just seemed a little bit uh, rugged. So just gone with the Dremel. It's on the doors as well. A few people have trouble with these brackets. And like I have here, you can see, so with my A6 rivet, I'm not sure if you can see that, but the, the head's crooked because to get the gun or the rivet, the hand riveter in there because of this angle, it's more than 90. So that's, that's okay. Doing a bit of housework. I'm just going to tap it with a punch to neaten the head up. That's my way around it. Not more acceptable. Yes, I understand. Probably weakened the rivet by... Yeah, because knocking the head downs, not changing the squeeze, but they're down flat and that's rock solid, not going anywhere. Got to work with what you got. All right, it's Cruiser's birthday today. This time last year is when the big box arrived. But I think I've just drilled my final hole in the Perspex. So skylight, sunroof, top window, windscreen, windshield, front window. Side door, cabin door, passenger door, pilot door, left hand door. So what I've done with these, I call it a rough cut if you like. It's taken me probably six hours, both doors. Um, a final trim, probably trying to be too, too cute I guess. But now I've got them so that they just, it misses everywhere. And it actually hits the, um, the frame where it's meant to. I've got the seal inside, but I just wanted to make sure I'm not hitting, because the considerations are these rivet heads here as well. Um, 
but now I've got the door nice. There is a bit of fore and aft in these doors, like a couple of mil, so you don't want it too neat. I'd rather have a bit of a gap, and then when it, you know, you've got to repeatedly close this, or do it more than once, and I don't want the glass to clip the fuselage. So, real happy with that. The way it's sitting is just perfect. Um, good job Zenith, I guess. I'll pat myself on the back a little bit. So, both doors. Next step, I'll play around with the latches, I think. Alright, might as well have a dry run of the um, door latches. Got the plans. It's a good photo guide on door latches. I printed out, they're available online. Got all my parts, a cup of coffee, some peanuts, almonds. I'll have a read and work my way through this. Alright, just getting a gist of my handles, how they go together and swivel and lock. I've uh, got this one on. First thing to note, in the um, we get two sets of keys. I think both sides, they, they're all fit, so I can unlock any cruiser in Australia or America. Um, just report it as it is. So there's a little, there's a little cover in there. So this one fell out on the first time I put the key in. So a little tiny spring and a little cover plate. That'd be a FOD hazard if I was working on fighter jets. Um, just let you know, and that's what happened. A little bit stiff to get the handles to turn for the first time, but now they um, now they work. And just getting the orientation correct, going well. Okay, so I got the handles and then these locking plates. Now these can go on a number of ways, but in here it shows one direction. So that's the right hand side door with the handle level with the the lock if you like, so that doesn't make sense, so when it's locked the handle's at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. And then in the um, photo diagram, that looks better, I think. Um, and then you'd pull it, pull it up to lock it, and also when you open it, this long handle actually hits the door sill, or the door frame. So there's no chance of opening the door, or less chance you open it all the way, hits that stop if you like, which means this tangs out of the way and then you can open the door. Um, and the arrow must indicate open, I guess. A bit burnt out on the cruiser for today. Uh, today's Saturday, so a club day. So I might take the camera, show you around Latrobe Valley Airport. It's a nice day outside. But um, I'll show you around. We might see some interesting aircraft and show you a bit of the airport. So we'll stop on the cruiser and the... The jab over there, might go for a fly later, see how I feel. Um, tough life, but let's have a look around. Alright, first stop, just helping Graham out with his Foxconn Terrier 200, powered by a Superu auto conversion. Just fitted a new MGL V16 radio we're going to test out once we drag it outside. Alright, the door mounted that at the back with three stainless steel rivets. Drilled a hole in the perspex to line up with the square hole behind it for the door handle. Pretty much it for the doors. I'll just mount the, um, the ball joint connection, which is 145mm down from the top corner to the ball, and it faces inwards. And there's the uh, ball attachment. Rivet, oh, just click it on for now. I'll rivet that later when I'm ready to paint. So the ball socket bracket, pretty much just remember, clearly mark the inside of the door. So this bracket with three stainless rivets goes to the outside, to the perspex, inside this bracket. You measure down 145, check your plans from the corner. Basically this goes up against the gusset, 145, just there. And, correction, faces inwards like that. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the doors. I tend to work in a way that, so I've done everything I think I can do up until paint. I'm going to trim the edges, I've written it on the window here, soft rivets all round, square each edge by four, 
uh, reminder to fit the front latch first because it lives inside there. I did ask the guys online what stops it you know, falling down. Um, we'll see how that works. So also I've drilled this hole out, got my handle and the handle slots in there beautifully. So consider the doors done for now, ready for paint. And part of the final fit will be to clean up the edges, radius the edges, um, end up with a like quarter inch overhang. Might even trim that back, I'm not sure what the purpose of that little overhang is. Seems a little bit brittle to me, hanging out there. But they turned out really well. Got this side on now. Um, like I said, ready for disassembly and paint. So when a little bit of work now should pay off in the long run. So when it's painted, it should get back together. All right, guys, thanks for watching that. I'm um, pretty sure I've got all the holes drilled that I need now in the two, two bubble doors, windscreen, sunroof. Uh, good to go. Next video, move on to the cow. Then uh, we'll paint this baby.